Good evening and welcome to today's program of One Call. Of course, thank you very much for joining us right here at the Tobago Inspirational Network. And with me in studio is none other than Dr. Maxwell Adeyemi, our resident doctor for On Call. Dr. Max, welcome to today's program. Thank you. Good evening, and how are you? I am fine. How was your trip? You ran away and left us for some time. Oh my God, I needed a break, you know. Um, it's just a couple of weeks break, you know, just to recharge, re-energize, and just chill for a while, you know. And I'm glad you said recharge and re-energize because mm -hmm. that's going to make a part of our topic for today. Of course, I'm Celeste yeah. McClure, your host mm -hmm. for On Call, or your co-host, Dr. Max is really our host. And mm -hmm. today we are going to be looking at stress, but not just stress alone. We're going to be looking at infertility and stress. Yeah. Yes, how the two of them work with Together. each other. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Max, before we get into our program, I mean, I know stress. I think <coughs> in the in in the past, maybe twenty years or so, mm. if I remember, I think stress has become almost a household word now. You find from even the young children complaining that they have stress for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. So before we get into how stress affects infertility, just broad definition, what, what exactly is stress when we, when we talk about stress? Well, basically stress is um, um, it, it's really something that some people think is abstract and something that is real, mm -hmm. all right? It's not abstract, stress is real, okay? And it is the inability of the body to, or the mental uh, state or human body to cope with existing pressure. When your ability to cope, you know, uh, is uh, more or less less than the amount of pressure that you're going through, then you go into a stressful situation. Because every one of us have the uh, tendency to be under pressure. Mm -hmm. And therefore you have coping mechanisms that will be able to combat this pressure. Mm -hmm. When you cannot make that balance, then you get stressed out. Yeah? Yeah. And basically that's what people call stress. And stress is a, uh, more or less a, it's a, it's a worldwide phenomenon. It affects practically everybody from every walks of life. And it not only affects the adults, it affects youngsters as well. So mm -hmm. school children, uh, students, primary school, toddlers, they could suffer stress depending on their circumstance. And also, babies inside of the womb could also sense stress, especially if their mother who is carrying the baby is undergoing stress. They could sense the stress as well. And they could also be stressed. But Dr. Max, let me ask you this. When you were growing up, mm -hmm. was stress ever part of your vocabulary? Um, depending. I mean, no, no, now you think about it and you look back, you might be able to say, you know, these were some stressful instances. Mm -hmm. But back then, did you yeah. ever conceive that what I'm going through is stress or stressful? Well, not as it is right now. Depending on the societies in which you grow in, okay. Um, I mean, you read books when we were much younger, and you hear about the British society and the American society, and everything is stress, stress, stress. But when you talk about the third world, or I mean, I was born and bred in Africa. We really don't know about stress as such, even though we deal with quite some really horrendous. <laughs> Situations. Stressful situations. You know, I mean, what people call stress in here, I just laugh. I say, is it what you call stress? I say, you ain't stressed yet. You never see stress yet. You understand? So depending on the societies that you grow in mm -hmm. and the, well, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable mm -hmm. and what the, the, the stress and circumstances are, you know, then people will tend to use certain terminology. I mean, it is more widely used now. I mean, in, in, in Nigeria where I grew up, um, youngsters now talk more about stress. And I, That's what I'm saying. Want to, uh, I want to tell them, this is stress, you know? 
uh, in my days, you know, this was We never, went through these things when you didn't like say it was stress. You understand? It's a part of you know, life. Those days when you wanted to say, uh, I was talking to one of my cousins when I recently traveled, you know. I said when I was doing A-levels, I did physics, chemistry, biology, maths, and art maths at A-levels, you know. And now you are doing um, A-level, you are actually afraid to go for the A-levels. And then the subject you are doing, you actually eliminate. You're just going through this simple, simple subject that you are telling me is stress. And I even think the know. exams were even, I mean, I know some people are, but I think the exams were even a little even bit more challenging than. And I was telling, I said, when we used to do mathematics, we used algorithm tables. Yes. We would use um, you other kind you of things to do calculations. And you to I said, now tables. they allow you people to use calculators. And what the hell are you talking about <laughs> stress, you know? I was, you know, I, I was surprised and I, I mean, oh, for, I realized for these, even the CISEC examination, mm -hmm. now they give you the formulas inside of the paper. When mm -hmm. I was doing the exam, you better remember all those formulas. You understand. Yeah? Nobody, and, and, you know? and we didn't complain of stress. Exactly. But now you apparently know? stress is a... So, um, I, I think um, stress may be a, a function of what society you grow in, really. Okay, I mean, I see youngsters here. You are given your meal in school, breakfast, and some people eat lunch in school. Mm -hmm. The school gives you books, and still, like you school. they pay your school fees, and still you you find it difficult to study and pass exam, and something has to be wrong with you. They understand, so, you, you don't understand. understand. You don't you understand. understand. <laughs> so it's, it's a difficult <laughs> thing to understand, and it differs from different society to a different society, you know, and uh, basically everybody's level of stress and coping skills are different. Well, I'm, and I'm therefore happy you said you that. you will be able to, you know, uh, cope under different circumstances. I'm happy you said that because, I mean, in preparation for, for this the discussion today, I was, you know, just doing a little bit to background reading on my own mm -hmm. and um, so when I came across as you said that mm -hmm. different people mm -hmm. um, process stress differently so right. stress doesn't affect everyone the same way so everybody might be exposed to the same circumstance mm -hmm. but it would affect everyone differently stress yeah. is more even in this society thing. that we say okay people are stress a little bit too quickly than other society in Trinidad and Tobago I've been here for about two decades and I've seen different people and do stress differently mm -hmm. as well. For example, um, your boyfriend leaves you. Somebody will say, okay, fine, at the end of life. And there are other men out there, so I'll recover and move on with my life. And then the same thing happens to another person, and then you realize they're in the hospital, they drank gramazone, or something happened, and they, you know, hang themselves, you know, or they shot themselves. So different individuals also process different things differently. Mm -hmm. A student fails an exam, the next thing you say they hang themselves. But yes, somebody has failed the same exam and mm -hmm. it's like, Monday could fall on a Friday, they really <laughs> don't bother themselves. <laughs> that, and, you that, know, that's and somebody who has learned how to cope You understand? So, and so everybody differ. Yes. Everyone. And everybody's coping skills are different. Your upbringing and your environment and your, 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 your coping mechanisms has inbuilt into you may be different. All right. Yeah. So let me, I, I just want to touch on this briefly with stress and then we go over to infertility mm -hmm. and then we will look at how the two join. Yeah. So um, again, I, I realize that of course there are different types of stress that people could go through. You have, mm -hmm. um, what is the routine stress and then traumatic stress and yeah. chronic stress. So now just expand a little bit, no, just a couple of seconds on the difference with the, the you know, like what's the difference between routine stress or chronic stress and traumatic Traumatic stress. Well, traumatic stress would be something that happened, you know, uh, maybe a bad event happened suddenly and it's pretty traumatic and devastating. Maybe, hey, suddenly somebody lost their father or you had a massive accident or something that suddenly happened and, you know, you, you're devastated. Mm -hmm. So that will give you a, a, a traumatic kind of experience. Mm -hmm. Some people are able to cope with it, some need counseling. Some people actually suffer what they call a post-traumatic you know, stress disorder, mm -hmm. uh, PTSD. emanating from that, you know. So that's a, a, um, an acute traumatic event. You could have a chronic, you know, a stress situation in which 
is an ongoing, recurrent thing, you know, always there, you know, maybe like your, job. Your, your job and mommy and daddy kind of situation and, you know, it's just there or you have a, a chronic disease that is stressing you out, you know, and that could be a, a chronic ongoing stress, in which case you cannot necessarily eliminate the problem, but you have to find a coping mechanism to deal with it, mm -hmm. okay? The other one would be when you have like a, maybe a routine stress, okay? A routine stress maybe you have to go to work every day or you have to drive through traffic every day, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of stuff and you just don't find it palatable but it's not something that is going to kill you, you know, or send you to the psychiatry. Hopefully or, it wouldn't you know, give you PTSD. You understand, that kind of stuff, you know, so that could be just a routine kind of stress. You know? All right. Now we're looking at how stress um, affects infertility. Right. right. So before we get into the meat of it, let's talk briefly. What exactly, when we say infertility, what are mm. we talking about? Well, yes, uh, infertility is uh, briefly defined as um, the inability of a couple to conceive or get pregnant um, in the face of regular sexual unprotected intercourse for at least a year. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so somebody just don't uh, say, okay, well, we're trying for a baby and and for three months and six months, they ain't get pregnant and you start getting worried, you know, that kind of stuff. You need to have given them unprotected sex, regular intercourse for at least one year, okay? Some people maybe haven't said maybe once a week, maybe when the, the, the guy come from offshore with that kind of stuff, and you cannot say they are infertile. It has to be a regular, you know, uh, unprotected and, uh, you know, lasting for at least about a, a year. Now, if there are other, if the person is possibly uh, an older age group, like say 35, 40 years age, mm -hmm. they, they, there's a modification to the definition because it has to be like maybe they have some other medical problem as well. We scale that to about like six months. Maybe somebody mm -hmm. have a PA, P, uh, PID, which is perfectly inflammatory disease. They have hormonal imbalance. They have other med medical situation that may mitigate against getting pregnant so we tend to modify that definition level you know all right and, and infertility mm. is it just identified primarily in one gender no that is the error that a lot of people actually um, you know uh, uh, put up and make a big deal of because when they say a couple is unable to get pregnant, the, the, the blame is always uh, focused on the female. Um, that is not always the case because in more than half of the situations, it's usually there's a male factor, um, either alone or a combination of a male and female factor that could be responsible for them not getting pregnant. And I've had situations in which um, Men who being they are, I know, they brag about these things and shift the blame on the, 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 the female. And um, a couple of times I've seen um, a female being depressed as a result of the blame from the spouse and the family got into the blame game too and they call you like, um, actually in Nigeria they will call you a he-goat. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> they call it a he goat. You know, if you can't, if a you he can't, goat. Yeah. Okay. You know, usually the the goat is the one that breeds. You know, whatever. But when you say a he goat, it means that. And you call is, a woman a he goat. You know. <laughs> no, it's like. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's it's I know. kind of very de degrading kind of statement where people. Make, like I said, speak of friends who call somebody barren. Barren, that kind of stuff. You know, they, you know, so so you're unable to. It's a, a mockery kind of thing. So I mean, it's not as bad here as in some instances in certain parts of Africa where, you know, you have to really uh, be on your peace and cues to make sure that you are pregnant after you get married. Okay, some people. Uh, if but that is stress in itself, Dr. Right, so that's but we going to we going to we gotta go to, we gotta go to our break. You, you so we're gonna talk about yeah. that on yeah. the other side of the break. Viewers, yeah. stay with us. We're gonna be right back with this program of On Call. Hi everybody, this is Minister Trisha Sobers. What are you doing at 8:30 p.m. on a Sunday evening? Well, this is an invitation for you to join us once again on the program God's Point of View where we share our opinions, our thoughts, our feelings on topical issues and also difficult issues that are contained in the Word of God. 
We do say, however, that at the end of the day, it's God's point of view that is the final arbiter for us as believers. So join us here on Tobago Inspirational Network, Channel 137, Realizing Purpose, Fulfilling Destiny. Welcome back to today's program of On Call, and in studio with me is none other than Dr. Maxwell Adeyemi. And today we are looking at stress and fertility. How does stress affect one's fertility? And so before we went to the break, we were just talking about, you know, in some cultures, the amount of pressure that women go under um, or undergo after they've been married to conceive. And just before we went into that, we were talking about the fact that infertility affects both male, male and, and female. female. And where they can they point that actually they, they put pressure on the female a little bit unduly, mm -hmm. okay? And in some culture, it's really, really uh, bad, okay? Um, and I've seen situations like that here in Trinidad mm -hmm. and Tobago in where the woman unable to get pregnant and it becomes a big issue between the the families and they tend to mock and you know say things sarcastic you know to and that put additional pressure on the you know uh, on the on the on the female and i've seen situations like that where people just do that and unfortunately we now found out that the problem is actually with the man you understand and the man had to like swallow his pride and but you he know, didn't. Yeah, well, th that was so very good because, I yeah. mean, just before, as I say, in, in preparation, I was just, you know, doing so. I came across an article where a man chop off the hands of his wife mm -hmm. because they were unable to conceive. Okay. And when they did the test, realized that he was the problem and wow. not her. He got so angry that he decided to mutilate his wife. I don't mm -hmm. understand that reasoning, but... Yes, um, that's, that's I mean, and that, that's as real as what's happening yeah. in the world today. Mm -hmm. But but don't let's go off on a tangent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we realize that it affects both male and, and female. female yeah. But how common is mm -hmm. infertility? Um, infertility is getting pretty common now uh, for the simple reason that a lot of people who are getting married, and uh, some of them are delaying, especially the females, they delaying their their their, their their pregnancy or their marriage because of academic career. and career purposes and the, 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 the older you get, you know, most time then the, the fertility may start to decline. Mm -hmm. Although there's a recent study that shows that a woman is, is fertile up to at least about 45 years old, you can still get pregnant um, um, pretty, pretty easily, okay? However, the teaching has always been that your best years is usually between 23 to 27 years of age, you know, mm -hmm. you make, uh, you know, your, your babies around those times. Uh, but you are still fertile up to about, you know, 45. Some people have seen um, two cases here in, uh, in the past three years who got pregnant at 47, 49, and then right in Tobago here. And by the time the baby was born, they were almost 50. You know? So, uh, but fertility generally declines with your age, age because your egg and then uh, the, 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 the number of the, uh, the egg production decline with age and also the viability may also decline you know, in, in terms of age. So uh, also the dieting that a lot of men also engage in and their lifestyle is becoming a problem because we have seen uh, over the past decade about 10 to 20 percent decline in sperm um, count, count as, and health um, of, the, of the sperm, okay, in men generally, globally, you know, so that also we impact on, you know, uh, fertility, mm -hmm. all right, so because there are a lot of men there, although they are producing sperms, but their sperm count is low, and two, the health of the sperm in terms of the motility and the, the, the morphology, the health of the, how healthy they are and how mobile the sperms are, are beginning to get worrisome, okay, because of the different lifestyle, the diet and other things that men engage in. Wow. But, Doc, I mean, I know you touched on it. In light of, mm. as we say, the, the, in light of women becoming um, reproductive later in life right. i mean i know in 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 the media i think the other day was a seven to a year old woman who 
um, give birth and, mm -hmm. and you know so it seems as if women even though you know they might even skip their 40s and, and go for later right. I think it's being said right now that Janet Jackson is now pregnant at 50 mm -hmm. so women are even looking at this but there is increased risk for the woman as well as the child is that what you're saying yeah the thing is the late the later your pregnancy is mm -hmm. um, the chances are that you you may have a higher incidence of abnormal babies okay mm -hmm. um, you may also have increased chances of uh, morbidity and problems for the woman uh, as well as the the, the child as well, mm -hmm. all right? Um, even though people are getting pregnant at 45 and at 50, uh, it's not always the best choice, mm -hmm. all right? Because the health of the baby and the health of the mother could be impacted sometimes in very negative ways, you know? So it's not impossible to get pregnant then, but it's a risk that you are taking, basically. All right. So first we have stress, routine stress or chronic stress mm -hmm. because of your job, your lifestyle. I mean, especially when we look at career people, men and women, right. they would have very active, aggressive, more so kind of lifestyles and jobs. Mm -hmm. So you're already creating a sort of stressful environment. Right. And then you bring that into a scenario where, okay, we're trying to conceive now and uh, now we find we're running into some challenges because maybe um, six months, we got to look at six months if we're saying, um, you know, you're doing this late in life, so mm -hmm. it's 35 and older. After about six months or even a year if you're younger of unprotected sex, then there's no baby that's gone to full term or, you know, conception right. has occurred. Um, Let's, let's talk a little bit about what that. What stress does to you really is that, I mean, when you're under stress, what happens is that certain chemicals are produced in your body, mm -hmm. okay? And um, a research was recently done in which they, um, they detected that the salivary amylase, you know, it's an enzyme or a hormone that's called the salivary alpha amylase, increases markedly in women who are under stress. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, obviously they realize they have problem with conception. So the stress hormone, basically, the, 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 the amylase, the, the cortisol, the epinephrine, the adrenaline, and the other stress hormone that are released, okay, within your body, make the environment of conception actually very hostile. It impacts on fertilization, it impacts on implantation, and also uh, your ability to carry the baby to term. Okay, so when you have all these stressful situations, the, the physiological and the hormonal component of the body also makes the environment very hostile and make it impossible to get pregnant. So basically it's your body saying, listen, you're in no condition to have a child right exactly. now. So, so the, I am helping you yeah, by not allowing this so to happen. So the body sends a signal to the brain and the brain sends a signal to the reproductive organs to say, hey, okay, this is not possible. And we also know that when those hormones of stress hormones are uh, are, are produced, what happens is that it goes into the brain and acts on the pituitary gland, mm -hmm. which produces what are called the gonadotropins, hormones, which are responsible for the sex hormones, the testosterone, and the, uh, the other things that are necessary for uh, copulations and fertilization mm -hmm. to take place and shut them down. Right. Okay, therefore, the sex drive is reduced, Increase. the ability to produce uh, sperm and fertile sperms are, are reduced and the ability for the woman to also produce viable eggs and other things are also compromised as a result of the vicious hormonal cycle of stress that interfere with your brain which is the control center that have an affectation on the reproductive hormones as well. And then if you're really trying to get pregnant during this point and, and there are outside factors know, telling exactly. you, you know, you, the society is looking on at you, maybe from so within the family. Putting extra stress on the, on, the, on, the, on the individual who is trying to get pregnant now will also compound the problem. So you have the in-laws at you and your friends and schoolmates all have children and you alone didn't have and the boyfriend or the husband is pressuring you because all the friends don't forget the, church can know, also do that subtly then, yeah? yeah church and stuff like that and uh, the families and surrounding they could also put added pressure and stress on you that could also compound the problem because generally you tend to figure okay after a couple gets married mm, yeah. you give them about a year grace and thing and then mm. after then you start expecting to see babies mm -hmm. right so if after a year 
no baby bump, two years, mm. then people start asking when you start in a family. You understand? And the, and the, the sad thing about this is this not only affect the natural process of conception, it also affects even you trying to use artificial methods like in vitro fertilization I found that and all very those things. Interesting. Yeah, because the, 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 the stress also affects those other methods of you getting pregnant if you try them and you're still under stress so you spend money mm -hmm. to go and get in vitro fertilization to go and get medication to go and do all of these things mm -hmm. but because the conditions still mm -hmm. hostile well, still under stress that could also negate you're basically the success wasting money. of that program but the good thing is that once the stress levels are dealt with and your stress levels come down and those other things are reversed a lot of people get pregnant even when they least expect. But the, when you say, I mean, it shuts down this each other, basically stress can affect your overall health. Yeah, because stress is a very common factor in practically every six sickness or disease in the body. The word stress could affect you. You're talking about hypertension, diabetes, cancer, or infertility. That's true. When you stress, your blood pressure goes up. Anything that, you know, your body could you know, actually think of in terms of malfunction, somehow, somehow we'll have some kind of, you know, link with stressful situations. And stress could actually aggravate them or trigger them. So if you are trying to conceive mm -hmm. and you realize that you're under stress and yeah. you think that, okay, at least let me eliminate that factor, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. What are some of the things that you can do to help cope or minimize with the stress. Because it's either, if it's a routine stress, then mm -hmm. you ought to look at a coping mechanism because right. it's not something you can get away from, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and so how do you cope or minimize or, or you know, deal with, with the stress? One of the things that you need to do is one, to assess what exactly is causing the stress to where you know where the stress is coming from. And when you know where the stress is coming from, then you start to deal with them one by one by eliminating them. If it's on your job, okay, or if it's at a home, or if it's a financial or whatever, you take steps to try to correct those. The ones that you could change, you can change them. The ones that you cannot change, then you find coping skills for them. Okay, so if it is that it's something like your job that you can't do anything about, you find coping ways, okay, you could counseling is there, relaxation techniques are there, other things, maybe vacation. There are so many other coping skills that you can take to drink with your stress. Jump on a plane, take a trip. the plane and go shop like some people. I have a cousin, whenever she's stressed out, she just go shopping. You understand? You know, so I don't that sounds like it. I don't think that's a very healthy coping <laughs> mechanism. No, it's especially not for women. Not for women. Some people do, and they get relieved by 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 just shopping. You know, I, I mean, I, think that I don't know how it works. <laughs> I don't know I how it know works. It, I'll be but, thinking, oh my God, look how much money. I spend. No, but well, some people don't have that kind of problem. Yeah. Who possibly could have access to, you know. Um, good amount of money and they could go shopping without any thinking about you know mm -hmm. the the stress of the finances of shopping they just shop you know and uh, some people just okay eat some certain types of food and they you know that's something like you because you know <laughs> that's where we get into the unhealthy part, unhealthy of, the part of it you know a read a so, book relax read a book uh, we got the sign that we have to wrap like a minute you know, ago so, so we kind of over time right right so there are coping skills and if you can't then you can what seek help from a professional right, uh, seek help from a professional uh, professional person a counselor clinical psychologist clinical uh, uh, sociologist or sometimes even a psychiatrist you know and the fact that you go see a psychiatrist for cancer doesn't mean you're mad because some people actually associate them, oh, they don't want to go to the psychiatrist because people would think they're crazy. You know, it's not like that. You need professional help and possibly that's the person trained to give you that kind of professional help. Dr. Mark, thank you so yeah. very much. We're out of time. And this was a very interesting topic, viewers. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And of course, if you have any other questions or queries, you can call us at 297-6602 or send us an email at tobagoinspirational at gmail.com. And we will even bounce that email if it's something specific for Dr. Max so that he can answer and get back some information to you. So thank you all for joining us, Dr. Max. Thank you very much for being on set. Is there anything you want to add? You have like two seconds 
to add before we wrap up the program? No, basically it's for people who may be in this kind of situations to appreciate what it is, then know that, okay, uh, by stressing the persons involved is not the solution you're possibly compounding their problem to make the environment as comfortable and as, you know, easy for them as possible, okay, so that you don't put them, especially the females who may have problems conceiving, don't put them under um, extra stress and unnecessary duress, okay, in God's time and with dealing with all the other situations, you know, things may happen. Thank you very much, Dr. Mark. Yeah. So thank you again, viewers. See you again yeah. next week, same time, same place, for another program of On Call. Bye for now.